Hey guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, um, Divine Masculines, let's talk because it hasn't been a particularly great weekend. Um, I've been feeling a lot of pressure on my head and yesterday a lot of pressure on my heart. So I actually want to come on, see if we can have a look at the energy. Let me just move this mic. Um, I was feeling it earlier this morning, but um, I haven't been able to really get on to camera. Um, and I was just sitting here and thinking, okay, let's just um, get on and have a look at your energy and see what's going down. That's quite heavy. Um, okay, let's have a look and see what the cards want to say. I'm just actually using any cards that I've got to hand. So, um, the Druid Craft Tarot. Mm, death. Um, it's the ego. I really felt, um, I'm not going to say like I was having a heart attack, but the heart kind of cracking open. And the pressure. It's like the awakening. Um, it's a transformation. It's probably having to deal with your ego now. Okay. Maybe we're just going to look at the ego. I'm not sure. Two of Wands. You're fighting against yourself. Um, you versus your ego this is partial success keeps coming out the two of wands so I feel it's the surrender stage surrendering now um, which means letting the past go the past you so um kind of all the people that you've been. I'm picking up there with them two wands there because you're, it looks like you're really having to support yourself. Prince of Cups. Um, So I've touched on letting go of the past. This is about being apologetic. The Prince of Cups brings in an offer, an apology. Very sorry in this picture. And that's the ego. Fighting against past events. Um, it's like a realisation of what's kind of occurred and now you're having to support yourself it's kind of like as you deal with yourself remorseful here I want to say okay Well, it's time to wrap this up now. Um, so the pain that you may be going through, I'm going to say, is kind of like the final stages now, and it will be battling against your ego. Okay, the death card for me is always like a, the death of the ego. Um, our ego never dies, but we learn to huh, um, recognise it. So it's kind of like the ego is shown has shown its uh, its true colours. And what it's capable of. We have the world, so it's time to wrap up these 
kind of behavioural patterns to start again. And it's very transparent now. It's like going back to the beginning of purity. And you come to that after the death card. So after you've gone through your transformational death, you're able to start a new chapter. Okay. Six of Pentacles. So finding this balance is, is um, <laughs> tiring, draining. That's like self-support again there, isn't it? You feel like you're giving and giving. So the scales are giving and receiving. And, and then we actually, because we have the Prince of Cups here, who is, I want to say, offering an apology, love. Um, there's a Queen of Cups. It's like finding the balance here, be able to move forward, wrap up a cycle for a new one to begin. Um... It looks like it's towards this Queen of Cups. I'm getting more, so let's just go with it. Um, five of Pentacles. So feeling left out in the cold, but we have the feminine's energy here. It's it's her that you've left out in the cold, and this is playing on you now heavy. So the Queen of Cups, I'm saying here, is, has been left out in the cold. And it's why while you've been going through your transformation through your ego death but your behavior it's your behavior that you're addressing and it looks like it's your behavior towards this queen of cups about wrapping up cycles for new ones to begin but it's been draining it's like you have um the transformation has really um taken its toll the magicians here okay so this is divinely orchestrated. You are in control of this. You can turn this around. With the world card here. Um, and the death card. After you've been through the death and you've wrapped up your cycles, you're now at the beginning again. Where you can use... Um, it's like your power within to create a new... A new cycle, let's say, a new pattern, a new way of being. Six of Swords, it's time to move on. There's two in a boat here. Um, this is now the Six of Swords is about wanting to not address necessarily things of the past, you just kind of want to move to move on to new horizons. Um, but it is about leaving the past behind. The waters are calm. And we have the Lord, which is the Emperor. So I just feel with this is still unsure what to do, but wanting to take authority, but there's just this contemplation. There's no action here. He's very alert though, I think. Um, okay, what's the bottom of the deck? The devil. <laughs> The ego, again. But um, on the devil card, there is always the lovers. And the devil always looks down upon this relationship. And I'm going to think that this Lord is... That was what he was doing as well. He didn't see the beauty within the connection. The, the tranquility, the peacefulness. So events have happened, and now... How do you say sorry? The horse isn't sure either. <laughs> um, but that's a big move to offer that cup after challenging times. But that's part of the pro process. That's the ego getting in the way. Okay. Um, So the whole point of this wrapping up cycles, the new ones can begin with the transparency that I said. It's about being able to talk about everything and not feeling ashamed or guilt, um, not holding on to that um, against your journey. 
It was your journey. And whatever was given to you um, will all be to face your own unique, unique fears. I'm dealing with the ego, the masculines. Not sure what I'm going to use. Okay, I've got Greek mythology cards here. Let's see what card wants to come out. Themis, Cosmic Order. Yeah, when the magician came out. Oh, it's got doubtfulness at the bottom. It's a lovely butterfly there. You can actually, what I saw was more of a cocoon. So the chrysalis that a caterpillar goes within before you know, um, evolving into a butterfly. That's how they were. So, Cosmic Order. Themis. Themis was a titan from a time before the Olympus deities. She represents pre-existing cosmic law and order rather than the humankind so this archetype could be called the will of the gods or natural justice. She is the coding written into the natural laws of our world that go back to the beginning of time. Well, I say kind of going back to the beginning, didn't I? I was thinking Adam and Eve, sorry. Human social order, planetary rhythms and animal migratory routes, for instance, all follow her pattern, patterns. Without Themis, things are chaotic and pointless. With Themis, justice, karma and divine timekeeping will prevail. So everything is as it should be. Her gift is good cosmic order. Themis was also a prophetess and could communicate through oracles or divination to in ensure her work was done. If you have drawn this card, then you can be assured that the matter in hand is being overseen by Themis and Divine Law and will help you by ensuring that good karma, justice and the correct order of things will prevail. Okay, so it's all in order. I've got no other kind of oracles up here, so like I said with the magician here, I want to read that doubtfulness. Psyche. Psyche. Doubtfulness. Okay, what way are we going? Psyche was a beautiful mortal woman who was lonely until the god Eros fell in love with her. Okay, so it comes in with this, I'm going to say, sorry, with this feminine energy here left out in the cold and being lonely. Um, so let's call her Psyche. Psyche was a beautiful mortal woman who was lonely until the god Eros fell in love with her. They were happy enough but Psyche was filled with doubt and wanted more from him to prove his devotion. She then naively betrayed his trust, putting Eros in grave danger. Eros left and Psyche was racked with remorse. I picked that up about the remorse. And grief for many months, causing suffering to the mortal world but even in her morose state she was still slow to do all that she could to restore their relationship. However, Eros recovered and the lovers were finally brought together for eternity by his devotion. What is the moral of the story? Rightly or wrongly, we can question love 
and cause problems in a relationship. But fortunately, the hot flames of Eros's passion can ignite a reunion, for ultimately the soul needs the life-giving passion of love, which emanates and awakens all things. Perhaps you should now have trust and not doubt this, the situation. I think roles are just reversed there. Um, I said about not really trusting this love, how the devil looks down on it, and I want to... Well, the energy is is that I've, I've lifted the cards and they've left another one, which is Kieran wound, woundedness. Um, I'm not saying how the the masculines, the divine masculines energy, couldn't see this connection, and that's due to the ego and kind of social conditioning, how it's frowned upon. But with psyche here and eros, so eros left and psyche was wracked with remorse and grief for many months, causing suffering to the mortal world. Which means we've talk, 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 um, I'll get my words out. We spoke about divine masculine, divine feminine energy coming together, the yin, the yang. Cosmic order, um, this is now when we are being called into our mission, the reason why we're here. Um, which means that you can be, you can at the moment maybe being put through an ex accelerated ascension process. There is serious pressure um, within the body, which I'm feeling, which means that um, it's happening quickly. Okay. Um, let me read this, Kieran. Woundedness. It's just, it's just staying open on Medusa, the feminine. Okay, let's uh, stop messing around and um, there this is. Kieran was famed for his incredible healing skills, but also for his insightful wisdom and empathy. With a deep knowledge of human fa frailty, frailty? When you're fail, <laughs> frailty. He understood the psychology of wounded feelings. Um, these compassionate skills were passed to the great heroes and demigods as he wisely mentored them. It's about learning, obviously, through your experiences. I said that it was kind of your own journey um, and everything that you've been through. There's no point kind of not addressing it as it was uniquely for you. These compassionate skills were passed to the great heroes and demigods as he wisely mentored them. Kieran was half horse, half man, so he was set apart from humans or gods, but still cultured, intelligent and kind. Myth tells us he was wounded in the thigh by a poisoned stray arrow and despite his skill, could not heal, heal himself. So he relinquished his immortal status as a god, which allowed him to die and descend to the underworld where he might find peace and rebirth. Death card. This card implies that sensitivity, compassion and healing are required now. If someone feels wounded, know that you can find peace within as you seek to understand and heal hid hidden pain. Be gentle and kind with human frailty and Kieran will surely help you. It, for one, it's being about being compassionate with yourself, but two, I feel that that's, there's been a bit of a revolt, uh, role reversal within the psyche and Kieran, but it's like Kieran was shot with like a poisoned arrow. Which caused him to surrender for a rebirth. I just feel that this is arrow breaking through the heart, this broken heart. Okay. Um. What else have I got left? I've got a. Uh, do you want to pull a divine feminine card? Oh. Okay. Okay. 
and then we'll end on a Romeo. And then I've left a card there. Um, Teresa of Avila, 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 our lady of the interior life. I trust the answers I find within me. I know that the presence of love is real. I don't know if you can hear that outside, but I'm upstairs and so are my girls. So um, you might be able to hear them. Right, let's find out where um, this Divine Feminine is in the book. Teresa of Avila. Page number 35. Let's give this a read. I'm not sure if this is what um, we're picking up or actually on the Divine Feminine's um, energy. Um where the Divine Feminine is at the moment. Okay. With passion and conviction, Teresa of Avila connects, to, connects us to the, to the love and truth available to us whenever we turn inward. Saint Teresa was born in Avila, Spain. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. In 1515. It's interesting, that's a devil card. <laughs> devil number is 15. As an adolescent, she experienced many illnesses and was confined to a bed, which allowed her to begin to explore her own thoughts. Yeah, I said that this is about wiping out the divine masculine, really. <laughs> There's no other nicer way to put this, but it is so that then you have to go within. You can have everything stripped from you um, to make you actually go into solitude, including illnesses, wake-up calls. But I suppose you've got to rest first before you have the wake-up call. Before you can wake up and be rebirth, I suppose. Reborn, rebirth. Let's carry on. She read every book she could find on spiritual, on spiritual exploration and contemplative prayer. By the time she was a young adult, so she started this during adolescence, so I suppose due to being bedridden, she couldn't, you know, she chose to develop, study. By the time she was a young adult, she knew she wanted to dedicate her life to the interior world. She entered a Car Carmelite co convent in Avila in 1535. She increased the emphasis on com contemplative contemplative prayer and eventually reformed the Carmelite order which was later joined by Saint John of the Cross over the course of her life Saint Teresa founded 17 convents throughout Spain at the age of 44 she began to have a series of visions that convinced her that Jesus Christ appeared to her in bodily form and yet remained invisible to the eye. These visions lasted for two years and would inform her books, especially the spiritual masterpiece, The Interior Castle, which charts the ascent of the soul as an inner journey through the seven mansions or states of being that exist within us. Ultimately, Teresa wrote in the hope of assisting her sisters in the convent to also reach the innermost castle where God dwells in our soul. She reminded them that we ourselves are the castle and that the door of entry into the castle is prayer and meditation. Her own personal spiritual experience is at the root of her instruction. The closer she gets to the seventh mansion where the soul ascends, which requires going further inward, the stronger the light is. 
that would explain my head chakra here. There's a seven chakras here with the crown chakra being the top and I felt in the heart as well. But the pressure on my head. So um, she describes the way to discern the voice and presence of the divine within us and the certainty of God that arrives that cannot be explained or doubted. The, this inner journey was so significant to Saint Teresa because she believed that God didn't care about the magnitude of anything we do, but rather the amount of love that we do with it. Pope Paul VI named Saint Teresa a doctor of the church in 1970. Her spiritual writings are considered integral to the Spanish Renaissance and to the history of Christian mysticism. When your soul selects her card. <laughs> Saint Teresa is a call for the importance of the interior life. She knew intimately about the spiritual wealth we all possess and have access to if we're willing to go inward. She not only emphasised the need to meditate and to pray in order to reach that innermost castle where the soul waits for us, but she also instructed the sisters of her convent on how to discern the presence of the soul or of a saint or of a holy person that is giving us wisdom from within us. She had a bookmark that supposedly read, If you have God, you will want for nothing. God alone sacrifices. God alone suffices, seriously. This synthesises the wisdom of her experience. I better read it again, hadn't I, because I bulged it up. She had a bookmark that supposedly read, If you have God, you will want for nothing. God alone suffices. Which means you have to go within, find your own home. Which is what the feminines, actual reading, like, I done a current reading a couple of days ago. Um... For the feminines, for the divine feminines, and that's it, they're finding their home, the safe space within. Okay, this could be quite hard to let go of the ego to accept that you need to do the same. The ego will try and stop you. Okay, um, this synthesizes the wisdom of her experience. Nothing less than divine love will satiate a seeker, especially once you have met you have met with it from within. She urges us to meditate, to pray, to go inward and meet with the presence of the soul. And then she asks for us to believe that it is real and that the answers we find are real. She asks us to move that inner truth out into the world with confidence and conviction. And that's exactly what the Divine Feminines are doing. Okay, so soul voice meditation what does love feel like in my body and the intention i trust the answers i find within me i know that the presence of love is real um i, think I shared that i believe on the facebook page i don't know if it was earlier on this morning or yesterday but it was a uh, video and i named it um that understanding your presence we were for maybe having a look at that over at the channel of love 666 on Facebook. Let's um let's end with a Rumi message, guys. Okay, let's give these a shuffle. Give me a chance to shuffle them. Okay, let's finish on the Rumi message. Um, I don't want to take two. Um, so, them two are just sticking together. It's like I'm following them. It's okay. It says, You who show the way. Card number 33. That 33 is um, Christ consciousness. Okay, let's read the message. It's Cosmic Order. I said it was like kind of divine is calling us now. 
We need to show the way. Divine feminines and divine masculines now. Um, okay. But it's like now it's about facing the truth. The logical mind runs away from drowning. Lovers accept drowning in the sea as their destiny. <laughs> the logical mind finds consolation in reaching a level of comfort in life. Lovers are focused beyond their comfort zone. Okay, Rumi. Let me just hold it up for this part. I have looked at you in my darkest moments, searched for you as though fumbling for the candle and matches during an unexpected and un interminable blackout. I am the ship at sea, seeking you as my guiding light. Nay, I am the sea, rising up to the horizon because I yearn to be closer to you. Then, oh, to my greatest relief, you rise like a phoenix from the ocean, casting hallowed golden light all around you. This great blazing angel of holy fire, in a sweet instant my soul rests in your presence. The sea becomes calm, the darkness abates, your light reveals truth, and through your, loving, your living presence I know my true self again. I am what you are, even when it appears I am returning after being lost in darkness, as though I could ever be extinguished. I am divine light. I am you, a living sun. Okay. Even in your unquenchable passion for service to humanity, to the world that offers you so much, there is a time when your most powerful offering is actually and most simply that of your presence. You show the way, you who inspire through how you choose to live and be, you who sometimes think yourself to be invisible, you who consider yourself to be of no particular or exceptional worth. Yes, you, you who through your choice to live your truth, reveal my face, demonstrate my love, embody my presence, heal my beloveds and love my creations. This oracle comes to you with a special message. You are an inspiration. You are helping those around you and even many of whom you are unaware. You are doing this because this is your path. This is your way and this is your gift to live a life dedicated to the growth of consciousness and through that dedication, inspire others to receive the loving consciousness of the Great Beloved that can ben benefit them so greatly, no matter what their situation or circumstances. You are not doing this through any effort or will. Just as the sun breaks through darkness with its own light, shining light with its presence by simply being, so too does your inner soul Sorry, it doesn't. It says, so too does your inner sun, your soul. You don't have to understand this or do anything with the information given, although you may find it of comfort or even be shocked of it, pleasantly perhaps. It is just an acknowledgement of who and what you are, given freely because you are ready to receive such an acknowledgement. That just reminds me of the Tao. I shared Wayne Dyer earlier. Um, he was talking about the Tao, what the Tao is about, and it's about that, that space with no name. It comes in brilliantly, um, okay, with what I was listening to earlier on, or what was kind of um, drawn to me. You are being gifted through this oracle with a sign, a portent. This oracle is an omen, an issue too difficult for you to understand, no matter how hard you have been working on it, is about to be resolved. You have no need to hold on to it or become more worthy of that resolution. It is going to happen according to the grace of the Great Beloved. And your job is to allow it to happen, to simply bear witness to its resolution, even if you have no idea what is going on in the process. You may find that whilst you are letting go, 
the resolution happens without you being aware of it until after the fact. Then apparently, all of a sudden, what was an issue was no longer so. You who help others are a worthy recipient of the great, of the help of the great beloved. Be prepared to surrender all plans and convictions about what you can and cannot be, about what you think you know and what you think you need. Allow the benevolent grace of the beloved to take you through the great waves as the seas become calm and serene under the living divine light. This oracle brings the message that if you have a situation in your midst that feels impossible to resolve, the divine has it covered. Do the sacred honouring ritual and let it be sorted out by a, by a power greater than your own. It shall be sorted out and your sun shall rise. Just as day follows night, again and again, so too shall your sun rise after any issue or struggle. Have faith and hope and know that this is a sensible approach to any dilemma, no matter how serious it may seem. For what use is it to bemoan the absence of day, even on the longest night, when you know, in every moment, dawn is ever closer to breaking once again? Your hope, then, is not foolish, but wise. Here's the sacred honour and ritual. Place your hands on your heart, and say, the divine who loves me unconditionally blesses me now with such grace that my life aligns with divine order and all becomes golden, blessed and mercifully held in the compassionate consciousness of the creator. I thank you for the courage and faith I have needed to endure the night. I now celebrate the coming dawn. I see it breaking. I see its light. And I thank you for the, I thank you for this mercy. With Rumi, who loves me unconditionally, I am now shown the way to the dawn. It is at my feet, and together we step into the gift of a new day. So be it. If you have a specific issue you would like addressed, hand it over to the Divine Beloved now by talking about it just as if you were having a conversation with your oldest and dearest friend, for that is exactly what will be taking place. Then, when you've explained your feelings, your doubts or fears, let it go, and know that the situation is held in the grace of the Great Beloved. You have completed your sacred honour and ritual. It's time to let it go. It really is. Um, spoke in the... I can't remember, um, is it the Divine Feminine's card? How Saint Teresa um, stated that she claimed that for two, was it two years? That Jesus came to her and guided her, even though it was invisible. So, very interesting read, guys. Um, okay, really it's time just to let it all go, to surrender now. I'm going to leave it there with you guys. Um... Okay, Divine Masculines, we'll catch up soon, but I just felt it was really important to come on because um, I have been feeling your energy. I just haven't had a chance to really address it until now. Okay, guys, um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll catch up soon. Take care. Much love. Bye for now.